Hey, what's up everyone? This is Vegetarian Zombie. I want to welcome you back to my Beginning C Sharp with Unity video tutorial series. In this video, we're going to be covering interfaces, but before we do that, let's dive into your task. In your task I gave you was to create some constructors for your alien struct. Let's do that right now. Here we are in Mono Develop, and I asked you to create a constructor that takes one parameter and a constructor that takes three parameters. Let's do the one that takes three parameters. First, I'm going to provide a public, and this is going to be alien, like so. And we're going to provide the three parameters. One is point value, the next is hit points, and the final is, is alive. And remember, we need to call our base constructor, and we do this by writing this like that. And now we'll set these values. Now that we have our three parameter constructor, let's create a one parameter constructor. And this will simply take the point value like so. And what we're going to do is we're going to call our three parameter constructor. And there we go. We now have our two constructors. I'm gonna to return to hello world and we're just gonna change this like so. And now we have our alien here, and what we'll do is we're going to comment this out by hitting command forward slash. That would be control forward slash if you're on Windows. And the same command forward slash to uncomment this out. Now let's return to Unity. And we'll run. And we'll disable the cube. And here we have our is alive false hit points one point value equals 100. Again, we took that code that we originally had and we shrunk it down to something that's much more concise and easier to read. Okay, in this video, we're gonna be talking about interfaces and this is a topic I really like. An interface is a way that you can designate an object to contain certain behavior. You're saying, I want this object to behave in a certain way. I'll be honest with you, I don't like the word interface. Because when I first was learning programming languages, that confused me. I kept on thinking about user interfaces. If you go to a language like Swift or Objective-C, you'll hear the same concept, but it's called as a protocol. Meaning, you're designing a way for one object to expect another object to behave. You can think about it in the United Nation. You may have delegates, and naturally you don't want to offend anyone, so you have certain protocols. Everyone agrees to observe these protocols. So there are no inst international incidents. Well, with our objects, we can create protocols or interfaces that will define behavior of how this object will behave. It doesn't say how exactly that behavior will behave, but it just gives an indication. For instance, you may have a protocol that defines a drivable characteristic, meaning this object can drive. It's not gonna tell how the object how it will drive, but it just states the object can drive. So in this case, you can provide a protocol to say an RC car versus a self-driving car. Both of these objects now have in common that they can drive, but they're gonna drive in very different ways. What we can do is in our interface is define methods, we can define properties, we can define events, and we can define indexers. Interfaces do not contain code. All they are are signatures. Defining an interface is relatively easy. First, we start off with the interface keyword, after which we give the interface a name. And by C-sharp conventions, we start with an I before that. And that just stands for interface. So in this case, we're gonna call it I drivable because this interface is related to objects that are drivable. You may want to have, say, an interface that's related to firing, such as guns or crossbows or something like that, and you may want to call it iFireable, and so forth. Inside of the curly braces, this is where you define your actual methods and properties and so forth. And you simply put the method signatures, meaning you put the beginning of the method, but you omit the curly braces. And these methods are what the implementers of this interface will have to put in their class or struct. So here we're going to come up with a simple one called drive. In this case, it's going to be void 
drive, and then an open parenthesis and a closed parenthesis, followed by a semicolon. When you placed all of your methods in here or properties and so forth, you'll close it off with a curly brace like so. Implementing an interface is relatively easy as well. For instance, in, our, in a struct, you would put struct, the name of the struct, and then after the name of the struct, you're going to add a colon. And then after the colon, you're going to put the interface name that you want to implement. Now, a struct or a class can implement several different interfaces. So you can put a comma after each one. And then when you're done, you'd put your opening brace to open the class where you'd put all your methods and so forth. Now, some of you may be wondering, what is the point of this? This seems kind of weird. You're defining methods in a separate object, and then you're having this other object implement these methods. Well, we'll be getting into that in the next video when we cover polymorphism. For now, don't focus on exactly why you do this. Just look at how you can do that. And in the next episode, we'll be covering different strategies on why this is important and how you can leverage these interfaces in your code. Let's see this in action. Here we are in our player class here. And what I want to do is create an interface that makes this player persistible, meaning I want to save this player. The way I will create an interface is right above the struct here, I'm going to create a public interface, just like this. And I'm going to call this I persistible. Now, some of you may be curious, what's with the I? That just stands for interface. You could call it just persistible if you want, but putting an I in front of it makes you lets you know that this is a name convention. And also, if I was doing this in my own project, I would put this in its own file called I persistible. What I want to do is create a method that will save this. And how I'm going to do this is I'm going to put the return type, which is void, and then I'm going to put the name of the method and any parameters that it takes, and then I'm just going to put a semicolon like that. I'm going to save it, and you can see here, now we have this interface that has a method called save to it. When I want to take an object that wants to implement this interface, I'm going to simply put after the name of the object, I'm going to put a colon here, and I'm going to write I persistible. Now I'm going to build this and you notice I get an error. The reason I'm getting an error is because I'm not implementing this save. Okay, what I'll do is underneath my constructors, here I'm going to create my public void save method and we'll say, and what I'll do is I'll just simply just log a message here. We'll just put save. Like this. In, okay, here's your task. In your task, I want you to create a shootable interface. And in this interface, I want you to create a simple method called fire. And then have this alien implement this interface and then create that fire method. You know, the method doesn't have to do anything. You can just simply put a, a comment like I did. But I just want to get you in the practice of writing an inter interface and then implementing it. That's the end of this video. If you have any questions about it, feel free to leave a comment below. In the next video, I'll be showing you how you can start leveraging these interfaces in your code, which really unlocks some of the power of object-oriented programming. So, exciting stuff ahead. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next video. See you then.